Hi and welcome to the Anti-Social Chat Show. I'm Eleanor Gould, a Chief Copywriter and Under Domestic Goddess at Creative Copywriting. Uh, hi there and I'm Tara Tomiko, Digital Marketing Consultant and App Queen. Welcome. Hey, excellent. So today uh, we're talking about something that comes up in my copywriting group all the time and I'm quite sure it's something that freelancers um, and people who work for themselves have a problem with all the time and that's pricing how do you go about pricing your work what's the right price to you know give to your clients are you over pricing undercharging it's it's a perennial thing everybody has a problem with pricing it would seem so i really want to get your ideas and thoughts on this um tara because i know um you you contributed to a group conversation um earlier and i was really interested in some of the things you you have to say so you know let, let, let's discuss it because i think this is going to be a really valuable conversation for anyone watching who does struggle with uh, pricing yeah money mm. <laughs> people don't like talking about it though no they need a bit of, a, <laughs> need a, bit of a, a prod i think when it comes to pricing as a freelancer or entrepreneur or, or whatever you want to call it it can be hard when you're starting out that's what i found um and before i set up my business I took a very long time to come up with a magic number. And the number I came up with was like, I can't charge that. But when I did the, you know, did the numbers and the maths and everything, that was quite a low number actually. And I think this is what a lot of people who are starting out struggle with or what I've seen in the group as well. Some people charge a low rate and they're happy with it. And then they find out that other people are charging way more and it's like, oh, hold on. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I agree. I mean, the thing is, um, going back to the last point you just made, is comparison is the thief of joy. So if you're, you know, if you're always looking at what other people are charging, you're never going to be happy because you're always going to be find someone who's charging more than you, most likely, often than not, or someone who's charging less than you. It's the same in life with any with anything you look at. And I know um, the Professional um, Copywriting Network Association (PCN) um have got a guide to what people right. what people charge in the uk but the trouble with that guide is somebody you know who doesn't have perhaps the living expenses of somebody who lives in london you know can look at that and go wow they're doing a day rate of like 400 quid a day right i i should be charging that and it's just you know it's it's comparing apples with pears really i think the the problem as well is that living expenses shouldn't come into it. I really do believe in value um, pricing, value pricing. And uh, so I kind of go against that just because somebody has lower living expenses. I don't think that they should be charging less. It should be based on what they're able to accomplish and how much they think that's worth. And one of the things that I have done, again, I started last year and I had an hourly rate of 80, 80 euros an hour. And, um, and I'm going to mention that because a lot of people are like, oh, oh, I don't want to give away my hourly rate. I don't charge by the hour. But when I said this number here in Barcelona, Spain, they, they flipped out. <laughs> they were like, 80 euros? Oh, no. Uh, and I saw some of my old competitors, uh, competitors, co-workers charging 25. And I had a moment of thinking like, oh, gosh, what am I doing? And I thought, hold on a minute. All my years of working, my knowledge my abilities is worth 80 euros an hour so i'm sticking to it well yeah i agree with you on that i think the thing is to come to your hourly rate you have to take in a whole host of variables not just one thing so a your exactly. experience what you bring into the table and your value but you know going back to the um you know your your kind of overheads of course that's got to come into it because if you look at it the other way um say for example uh you were you know, just, just to give an analogy here, you mm. uh, were building a table um, and the raw materials cost, say, £10 and you're selling that table for 8 You know, you either right, gotta you improve, wanna, yeah. you've got to improve on that. So your, your, your living expenses are going to come into it. So if, if you've got a massive, great big mortgage, all your kids are at school and you've got to pay for that, your fee has to somehow take that into account or you, you're not... You, you know, you, you've got to come out of the business. It's, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so, so that is just I, one I of the variables. That. I'm not saying you should, you know, totally take it into account, but some, you know, because 
this is where market forces are going to come in and you know somebody you know living in Goa on the beach can come in and undercut but then if they can they provide the same value as you but do you know where I was coming from with what I was saying was on the basis that people are charging and they're charging low now if they're charging low they've already figured out that they can live on that right Mm -hmm. now if you're going to come in and say you know I'm going to charge um 20 pounds say for a blog post they've already figured out that they can you know if they get five of those they're good well they're going to get people that are going to offer that money yeah i'm seeing not just in your group but in other groups is that when people say oh i charge x amount oh it's not fair i only charge this amount whose problem is that that's your problem if you're upset because somebody's charging more because you obviously can live on the amount that you're charging right that's how i see it well, that's why I said, that's why I said, you know, comparison like, to the thief of joy should be, don't, you know, yeah, it's nice to have a guide of really, you know, where you should be, but that's all it is. It's a guide. You can right. Charge, at the end of the day, you can charge what the, the nerf you want. It's what the people but, are going to pay for it. <laughs> well, another point is, you know, you could be, you know, charging what you consider is a low, well, you was okay with the rate and then you turned it along, you see someone else charging what have you. And it's a lot more than yours. You go right. I'm going to increase my prices right now, and then all of a sudden you've got no clients. It, here's you know the thing. I mean? so it, here's, it works both ways. Yeah. Here's the thing that I do, um, and obviously I've, you know, I've learned this along the way. So it's not like this has just come from Tara Tomiko. <laughs> but basically, I charge 80 euros an hour, right? But people that want to hire me now, I charge more. My rate is higher. Why? Because I was able to secure clients that. I'm providing the value and I don't have time to take on a lot of other clients. So just to deter the people that want something that's cheap and not value, you know, a value, then, you know, I charge a little higher. And I think that what people should do is when they start charging and it's low and they're hearing about other people that are charging more, just the next time you get an inquiry, charge a little bit more. I think you have to do it over a period of time. You can't wake up one day and say, I'm not charging 20 anymore. I'm going to yeah, charge 100 you- I agree with you there. You have to do it over time as your experience and right. skills and value increases. You don't just work out a bed and go, oh, yeah, can, exactly. I, I, I can write a $20,000 sales letter. Right. Those right. people who are getting that kind of money are either because they're well-known copywriters and people will pay that or or because you know they are actually there's they've found a way to measure that they're that, that that's the value they're providing with things like sales letters you know it's not your copy that's necessarily yeah. uh, selling you know and getting all the leads it's all the other factors the traffic a whole host of factors yeah. you're just a cog in that wheel right exactly. when people are coming into copywriting especially direct response that kind of thing they say, oh, i'm a copywriter my words can sell no your words only sell in the right environment and that's really exactly. important you are not a, 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 a genius a magician i am but you know most of, <laughs> are, of course and uh, and direct response is very different to other types of copywriting yeah well right? this is the problem you know what we're talking about here copywriting or content writing or a mix of a mix of the two so you know you can provide that value-based um copywriting if you can measure it to see what I mean, if you can't measure it, if, if say, for example, someone comes along and says, I'll oh, write a 500 word general blog post, but not much research. Um, and then you start saying, well, I'm providing so much value. If somebody reads that and, you know, you get, it goes viral on, you know, your, your products. Yeah. Can, it's like, yeah. How are you going to measure that again? You but know? I don't think, I don't think that that is necessarily the value. Um, what's, what's the word, the measurement all the time, the value is also, you know, how well the piece is written. Yeah, yeah, um, I agree with that. I don't think it always has to be about about whether it's going to go viral. And also, some no, I was just using some, that as an example of right. But some, some people, people do uh, charge value based pricing on on how much um, you know how much return they're going to get. They'll get a commission on so ah, that kind of thing. See, this so is not what I meant. By no, value. I know what you meant. It, I know so what you meant by providing <laughs> the value. But how do you define value? No, what I meant was the value that you're providing to the client. The client has a problem and you're fixing it. Now, how well you do it at the end of the day, the client is going to tell you. But if you're, if you're charging 300 euros for a 500 word blog post and the client loves it, regardless of whether or not it goes viral, it doesn't, but the client absolutely appreciates everything that went into it and is using it. 
they'll come back again and again and again. And maybe those blog posts aren't going viral. That's what I meant by value. It's about when you put out the work, are people enjoying it? Are people coming back for more? If they are, then increase your prices after a while because you've obviously got something, you know, uh, going for you and I think it's more than just writing the blog post it's how you deal with the client oh, yeah, it's how you manage the whole process and that's the value for example one of my clients just likes the fact that I'm always available and this is something that's spoken about a lot like don't be available for your clients and I don't I don't really prescribe to that I just think if you can be available be available and it's one of the things that you know one of my clients really appreciates but to other people oh no but you know I build that into my my pricing thing my pricing thing that doesn't sound right a pricing strategy so there you go that's another <laughs> example of a fact that you're you're you've got in, into your pricing so that increases it so yeah. i agree that so you know really what you're looking at is a whole bunch of factors you need to factor in and it's going to be exactly different for everybody so yeah. although it sounds like well there is no one you know price there isn't there isn't no. any one price that um you can charge you you can have a guide for whatever country you're in and what type of clients you're dealing with you know it reminds me of the beverly hills plumber you know if you're a plumber in beverly hills you're going to be charging a lot more than you know one in braintree in essex right that's not right. <laughs> but you know what i mean it is it's it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's and, so many variables so when i see these conversations go on I, I understand because I've asked the question, what should I be charging? And you always say, oh, I'm not quite sure. But now I don't ask the question. I tend not to get into those conversations because it's, you know, you always, there's so many answers to it. There's so many factors. Right. It's also to do your confidence level, isn't it? Yes. Because, you know, picking a number can be quite scary. And, and the other thing I want to mention as well, I don't charge by the hour. That's my hourly rate based on, you know how long it takes me to do something and you know that's what I offered to a client and I absolutely love working on retainer which is a whole different um, mm. board game altogether and I know this is slightly different uh, to copywriting because I'm not a copywriter I just do some copywriting as part of the services that I offer so I, I just want to put that out there that you know it's slightly different if you're a copywriter well, lots of copy what I'm saying that. might might not, yeah, you know, have retained they, have, well. they do retain. Okay, great. And the, and the, and the thing Especially is, if they're doing that, social media marketing, which a lot of them right, do. Now, there's the, exactly. that, you know. mm -hmm. And there's a, you know, that takes a lot of time as well. And that's another thing. There are some things that I can do in five minutes that will take somebody an hour to do. Mm -hmm. I, and this comes up all the time. It's like, so should I be penalized because? Uh, you know, no, because, you're, you're, with... because that's the whole point why they're paying you. You know, if right. I'm paying that's... somebody to do something, I'll pay them the rate that they're charged. If that takes them two minutes, good, because it's not right. going to take me two minutes. You know what I mean? The, the only thing I will say is one of the things that I do is I, I do like to give clients an idea of how many hours they get in. Never work <laughs> in those. I always go over, obviously, because mm. every time I'm working, I get full into it. Um, and it's like, it's like my lifeblood. But the idea of that I've noticed from doing that is it's so much easier now for me to speak to prospective clients. So how long do you think that will take? Like, you know, we can do, you know, six blog posts a month, including email. Mark. It's easier to do that if you're actually tracking your time. So yeah, it's true. important to, to do that so that you can price things in the future. Um, and I, you know me, I love looking at numbers. So I sit on my Excel sheet and I look at why did it take me so long to do that? For example, editing videos, you'd be surprised that a 15 minute video can sometimes take me four hours from start to finish, you know, to produce. But for some people say, like, it's only 15 minutes. Why does it take that long? But you don't know that unless you're tracking your yeah, time. Yeah. And, and that's something that, like, you know, you can, well, and also it's something that comes with experience because sometimes right. you get quicker at things the, exactly. the more you do them, obviously, and you get to know where all the roadblocks are. You, the, the, and, that, and that's another thing that you should factor in is that people are paying you for yeah. that experience that, you know, exactly. I read in the group someone took, I don't know, several days or what have you to write a blog post. I know for a fact, if you give me anything to write about, it won't take me that long. It doesn't matter if it's because I've kind of, I know all the processes I have to go through, even for the research, you know, so right. um, it's just something that you get right. a feel for as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. So, 
you know i think it's just experience and confidence like you say and taking all the factors into account and stop comparing yourself to others because yeah you're just gonna it, you're just gonna be pulling your hair yeah, out if you do that all the time aren't you sometimes when people ask me they say oh my gosh well that's so low mm. you could charge at least double and i'm like okay but baby steps you know this this is working for me right now so that's well, fine exactly exactly so, yeah good Ooh. What a lovely combo we're having. Exactly. Money, money, money. Make it rain, people. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> anyway, that's um that's all I've got to say about on the on the subject because Oh, I, I could talk about it for well, hours. We could talk about it for hours, but you know, <laughs> it's just gonna be one of those subjects that, you know, go on and on, but hopefully we'll give people some, you know, ideas going forward. Um, but that's all yeah. I've I've got time for. Um the only news I'd, I'd love I'd love to know from people as well, if they, if you don't mind putting in the comments, how much you charge? Well, okay, let's not say how much you charge, but how do you charge for your work? Yeah, what factors do you, what yeah. factors do you take into account in your charging? That would be a good, yeah. good one to know because I think if more people comment, then it will give other people an idea as well. So I think that's a very good point, Tara. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. All right. So we yeah. should wrap up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's all for me of course if you're looking for a, the best course out there on how to write compelling oh, yeah. emails then of course <laughs> yeah. i'll leave the link below to my utterly compelling email copywriter course and tara do you have any news oh yes uh well this kind of ties in with pricing if you're running your your business you know you're a freelancer i really have to advocate for AppSumo because you can get lots of tools on the cheapo um, and I found out that Evernote was on AppSumo so there are a lot of people out there who are using Evernote, Wistia, Buffer at silly prices mm -hmm. uh, so basically if you sign up to AppSumo you will get a newsletter about some tools and apps that are like $39, $49 for life so yeah I'll put the link below as well. Oh, we'll all be grabbing that. So is there lots of uh, trackers there as well so we can track how many hours oh, we're doing? Yeah, there is a spy tool coming out next week. I cannot wait to get my hands on that. Okay, well, that's goodbye from me. Love, peace and great copy. And ciao, ciao from me. Bye. Bye. <laughs>